My name is Maggie Mankin. I'm the Director of Education at Hackbred Academy. Um, and I'm here to tell you a little bit more about our admissions process. And specifically, I'm going to be talking about our collaborative coding interview. And this is the technical interview that's a part of the admission process for the engineering program. So today I'm going to tell you about what is the collaborative coding interview and why we do it. Number two is what happens during the interview. So I'll kind of take you through step by step the process of the interview. And then number three, I'll tell you about how you can prepare for the interview. So first off, what is the collaborative coding interview? Well, it is a remote pair programming exercise with a member of our technical staff. So you'll be on a browser based coding environment with a nut with a person who works for Hackbright it might be me might be another instructor for the engineering program on the phone with you. And you'll be working on a, a coding problem together. Um, and the technical staff member will explain what that problem is, um, answer any questions that you have, give some examples and make sure you have everything that you need um, to be able to, to solve the problem together. And the reason why we do this, there's actually two reasons. So the first reason is that we want to make sure that you've done enough coding to know that you really like it. Um, and you don't have to act really enthusiastic and you know excited during the interview. That's not what we're looking for. We just want to make sure that you've done some coding um, so, so that you, we know that you know that this is, this is the right decision for you to come to Hackbright. So um, this is not something that you should come into with absolutely zero coding experience. And I'll talk about, again, how to get that experience in the third part of this video. The second reason why we do this technical collaborative coding interview is so that we can see your understanding of some core concepts, some core programming concepts. And I'll talk about what those concepts are in also the third section of this interview. All right, so you just heard about what is the collaborative coding interview and also why we do it. So now I'm gonna talk about what happens during the interview, kind of a step-by-step -step process. So first off, you'll have scheduled the interview um, on, on that with that technical staff member and you'll agree on a time. Um, make sure that you have access to a, a computer and internet beforehand um, and then don't you, you won't need your notes or anything like that. You might want a piece of scratch paper perhaps before the interview. Um, and the, t the, the interviewer will call you on your phone. So this will happen, you know, both on the phone. And then once you're on the phone with that person, they'll send you an email invitation to a tool that we use for collaborative coding in a web browser. So you'll have your computer, you'll be on a website where you can type code and see what your interviewer is typing as well. And they'll be able to see what you're typing. And you'll also be able to evaluate that code at any point. So then once you're both on that browser based coding editor and you're on the phone with each other, maybe you'll put it on speakerphone. Um, the interview will interviewer will explain the problem that you'll work on. And um, I'll give an example for a problem that you might see in this interview. So let's pretend like I'm your interviewer right now. I'll say, OK, so the problem that I like to work on with you is um, I'd like you to write a function that takes a list of integers as an argument. And the function should return an integer, which represents the sum of any odd numbers in that input list. So again, the function taking in a list, returning a number, which represents the sum of any odd numbers. And then I'd provide a couple of examples with here's a list, here's the expected output, here's a list, here's the expected output. Now you can do this interview in whatever language that you feel comfortable with. Um, so again, I'll give you some more recommendations at the end of the interview for how to get started if you're not sure you know, how to prepare, how to make sure that you're ready for this interview, how to pick a language. Um, but whatever you are studying, whatever you feel most comfortable with, you can use that language. Um, so if you are using JavaScript, maybe I would have said it, it should take an array of integers just because that's what's what that's called in JavaScript. So um, then you would just, you know, once you understood the problem, asked any follow up questions that you had, um, you would just begin coding. Um, 
you you are will be expected to sort of take the lead and come up with the the basic kind of way to move forward. Um, and your interviewer might jump in occasionally to clarify what's your approach, what's your process. If you get stuck, the interview will, interviewer will certainly jump in and help you get unstuck. Um, it's totally normal to get stuck. I know it's really nerve wracking to code in front of someone, so that's not lost on me at all um, or, or whoever you have as your interviewer. And the goal will really be to help you feel comfortable, um, to be able to show us what you know, um, and to be able to make progress on the problem. And if you forget syntax at any point in the interview, or the in the interview, your interview will, interviewer will jump in and, and help you out with that as well. Um, but please don't use Google or Stack Overflow or your notes during the interview. So I just told you about what happens during the interview. Um, and next, we're going to talk about how to prepare for the interview. So this is probably the hardest uh, thing to explain. So I'll try to talk to two different groups of people here. There's one group of people, perhaps this, this is you, maybe you've never written any code at all in your life. So if, that, if that's you, I would try to pick a language that you're gonna start learning um, and probably give yourself at least two weeks um, to really understand the basic syntax for that language. And there are, there are many appropriate languages to choose. At Hackbright, we teach Python, and we think it works really well for beginners. Um, but you might have already you know, started or heard about, or maybe you have a friend who can help you with another language. Um, others that are common are Ruby, PHP, um, JavaScript, very, very common coming in. Um, and then some, some other lower level languages like Java or C. Um, so any of those are okay. Um, if you really don't know or don't have an opinion or have no inclination towards any language, I would go with Python um, simply because that's what you would be doing at Hackbright. And it's a really nice beginner language. Um, and there are tons of wonderful free resources on how to learn it. Um, so give yourself two weeks and study these six concepts. So the first concept is um, data types. So strings, integers, floats, understand basic data types. The second concept is conditional logic. So can you write an if statement? Do you know the syntax for writing an if else statement? Can you use that to solve a problem? The third concept is looping. So in Python, there are both for loops and while loops. In other languages, there's, there's some kind of a loop that you'll use to iterate and um, solve a problem in some way. So study loops, study the syntax for loops, understand how to use those to solve a problem. The fourth concept is lists or arrays. So a list is a, a, more, a higher level data structure than a, than a string or an integer. Um, it can collect many different values inside of it and you can use that to solve problems. So study using lists or arrays. The fifth concept is functions. And functions is a really big um, thing. So really study the basics of functions. So how do you define a function? How do you call a function? And how do you return a value from a function? And then the sixth thing, it's not really syntax, um, but I'd like you to practice algorithmic problem solving. And so an example of that, going back to the example that I mentioned earlier, would be given a list, right, return the sum of any odd numbers in that list. So coming up with an algorithm to identify those odd numbers, accumulate the sum, and return it, right, that's totally language agnostic. Make sure that you understand how to, how to come up with that algorithmic process. Um, for solving a problem like that. Um, so that's for folks who've never written code at all before um, and who are just looking for places to get started. At the end of, the, at, at the end of this video, we'll show some links um, to actual resources that we recommend you start with if that's, if that's you. Now, the other folks that I'm going to talk to right now are the people maybe who have, who've already been writing some code. Maybe it's Python, maybe it's JavaScript, maybe it's Java. Maybe you started a year ago, maybe you wrote code 10 years ago. Um, I know that folks come in with all sorts of different amounts of experience um, and background. 
Um, so number one, um, definitely review your syntax before you do the technical interview. So even if you're feeling pretty confident, even if you're feeling like, no, I think I've done something like this before, um, make sure that you're solid on those six concepts that I presented in the previous section. So, um, and we also list those on our website. Um, the other thing is, as far as choosing a language goes, if you know multiple languages, really just focus on one. Um, because when, when you're at this stage, it can be really helpful to free your brain up from getting confused about, oh, is that JavaScript or Python? So really, if you're, if, you're, if you're reaching out and checking out all different types of languages, maybe two weeks before the interview, really just focus on that one. Maybe it's Python, maybe it's JavaScript. You know, focus on one and um, study it well so that the syntax comes pretty naturally to you during the interview. Um, the other thing is that if you have background with um, one of the languages that I haven't mentioned, like HTML, CSS, or SQL, those are not good choices for the for the language for this interview. So it's not really possible to do this interview in SQL or HTML or CSS. So if if you if you do have experience with one of those, maybe check out Python or JavaScript um, a bit more before before the interview. So that's it. Um, prepare by you know checking out syntax, practicing uh, solving problems. Um, looking at some of those resources that we'll link to at the end of the interview. Um, I would give yourself at least two weeks, um, maybe 30 minutes a day, just practicing writing for loops, practicing writing if statements, making sure that, um, you know, the, the syntax is solid. Um, we recommend, you know, books, websites where you can practice coding challenges, um, in free interactive books that are online. Um, they're, they're, a couple of wonderful courses um, on Python, on Coursera um, that you can check out. Um, and uh, so it's really just about what, what learning modality you prefer. Um, so that's, that's about it. That's my advice for you. Um, make sure that you, you know, make sure you are familiar with basic syntax and uh, that's it. So in this interview, I told you about what is a collaborative coding interview and why we do it. What happens during the interview? and then how to prepare. So if you, if you follow my advice, you will do wonderfully on the interview. Um, I really look forward to, to working with you and um, congratulations on considering this amazing career change. Um, I highly recommend it and uh, thanks again.